Now, let's move on, people. We got a few minutes left in the podcast. Let's cover this stuff about Skip Bayless uh, talking about Anthony Davis. I'm going to play a little bit of Skip Bayless's comments on Anthony Davis being overrated. Then, you know, I'm going to give you my breakdown. Here's Skip I like Anthony Davis a lot. He's a fine young man, great kid because he's still got a lot of kid in him. But I'm going to hark back to the All-Star game in 2014 and on the old show on ESPN. We were at the game and we had Anthony Davis on as a Pelican. Obviously, he was in his second season. And he sat right there at our desk and he very matter-of-factly said, I'm the best player in basketball. And you would think that would resonate, that would have shock value, that would catch fire, that would trend on the internet. No, it didn't because... There's not a lot of electricity to his presentation to the media. Right. He's pretty matter of fact. He's pretty low key when he speaks. And there's something about this kid that doesn't move the needle that I don't really understand. He can put up numbers because he is the PER prince. When it comes to player efficiency rating, over his six seasons, he's averaged sixth in the league. So he puts up huge numbers, shocking numbers. But they're empty calorie numbers because they don't translate enough into wins. And I know you can say he doesn't have enough help, he doesn't have this, but I'll I'll go back to your man LeBron James. There have been many times when LeBron didn't have enough help in his first go-round in Cleveland, but they won a bunch of games. So I look, I, I believe in DeMarcus a little more than I believe in Anthony. Okay. But if I combine these two guys, they've played 14 combined NBA seasons. They've played a combined 921 because they're going on a thousand games in the regular season. Guess how many playoff wins they have between them? Zero. Because Anthony played one series going back three years ago Golden against State. Golden State before it was really Golden right. State. Right. And he got swept. And he put up good numbers, oh, but he got swept. Yeah. He put up big numbers. I, I get it. So now he's the only number one overall pick in NBA history who is winless in the postseason so far. And again, does he have a long way to go? Sure, he's got a long way to go. But neither, and obviously, Marcus was stuck in Sacramento. You say he didn't have enough help. I just don't know if either one of these guys at their position is that guy who changes everything. So for me, and, and I hate to be too critical of Anthony because I, I do like him a lot personally, but given his numbers, given the numbers he can put up and given his player efficiency rating, yeah. he's the most overrated player in basketball to me because he doesn't have anything to show for it. Yeah, I think the thing is, Skip, when you look at his numbers. That's Skip Bayless, man. Uh, he's talking to Shannon Sharp, and I personally think Shannon Sharp needs to just not comment on basketball matters because Shannon Sharp should have shut him down and said, hold on, you done lost your mind. And sometimes I would think that Skip Bayless is an intelligent man, I think. And Skip Bayless, used, he, sometimes, you know, he does this, this clickbait stuff. And the things he did, like, for instance, the stuff that he did with LeBron James. He was criticizing LeBron James back in the day when LeBron James was excelling, when LeBron James was winning league MVPs, when LeBron James was leading his team to the championships. This clown's still out there uh, criticizing the man. First of all, let's, let's get something straight. Anthony Davis is a grown-ass man. He's not a kid. Okay, stop the bull crap. He's not in college. You can call the college kids, kids, whatever. This man's grown ass man. He's been in the league for some time. That's number one. Cut it out. Second thing is, Anthony Davis is not the general manager of the New Orleans Pelicans. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna have a we're gonna extend the show just a little bit so we can cover both these interviews from these uh comments or uh, topics from Skip Bayless and uh, Stephen A. and also the preview for the Dallas Mavericks game. Anthony Davis is not the general manager of the New Orleans Pelicans. His name is Dale Demps. Dale Demps has made some really, really shitty calls. Some of them really shitty and terrible calls. It's not his fault. Let's take a look at some. You know what? Let's span out on that. I'm going to go. I'm going to dig into that because that needs to be known. That when Anthony Davis came here, he was playing. Dale Demps was tasked with the responsibility of pairing the right personnel with Anthony Davis. Did he do it? No, he did not do it early on. Just recently, this year, they really got some success. And the last time was when Monty Williams was finally getting some success. He got the team into the playoffs on an excellent late season run, including one of the big wins of knocking the San Antonio Spurs out in the last game of the 
year, which ultimately dropped the Spurs from where they at, where they were at number two, all the way down to outside the top five, which affected them when it came when the playoffs hit. The Pelicans did make the playoffs and got and had got swept against the, the Golden State Warriors. At one point, in a couple of games, they were up in double digits, but that was the Golden State Warriors, and they became the you know they took off from that point. Dale Demps had not built the correct team around him. He made a series of really shitty moves, uh, uh, bringing in people like Ty- Tyreek Evans, who just didn't fit. Eric Gordon, who was, who was really shitty and when uh, who wanted to leave, but then he forced him to stay. Amir Osik, who I really like Amir Osik, but we shouldn't have gave up a first round pick to get him from Houston. Then when he gets here, then when he gets here, the guy, you overpay him. Give him 11 something million dollars when he finally comes back off his injury they do not play him they finally trade him but they can't move him because the contract was so bad that's the contract that demps gave him. then they ship him to chicago with a first round pick so you took two picks away from the team to get one player that is how you build a team they acquired darius mill another second round draft pick players they couldn't develop them those guys had to go somewhere to get developed then come back to contribute that is a problem that is not Anthony Davis's issue. That is Dale Dempson administration issue and their failure to build a competent team around Anthony Davis. This year is different because their asses was on the line. They didn't want to lose their jobs. Both those guys, the administration knew that if they didn't get it right this year, that's why they moving with such determination to make sure this team plays better, get the personnel pieces because their asses are on the line this year. So we got to take that away from Anthony Davis. And the third thing to talk about to, to, to lambaste your ass is to show you the stats that Anthony Davis has been averaging since DeMarcus Cousins went down. Averaging 34 points a game, 13 rebounds a game, two and a half assists a game, two and a half steals a game, almost three blocks a game, and he's shooting 50, uh, uh, 82%, uh, uh, shooting 80, 82% from, what is that, the free throw line? I mean... That, that's got to be, that's terrific numbers. He's averaging 34 points a game, 13 rebounds, two and a half blocks, two and a half steals. And th- th- that's just a small comparison of some of the numbers. How dare you say that that, that translated in wins. They moved from the cellar. At one point, they were outside of this, the, the Western Conference playoff race. They were ninth. They moved up with seven straight wins. They knock off the Spurs. That's the seventh straight win. They now climb into the top five. They're only, they're now tied. They, they are now with the Spurs. With a couple more wins, they could surpass the Spurs and move up into the top four, top three at your line. So it's not empty calories, whatever the hell that means. It means that Anthony Davis is, is, is taking his team on his shoulder. And big ups to Anthony Davis. Big up to Drew Holiday. Big ups to Dale Demps, who finally got it right. Who finally got it right. Even though he sent the draft pick out, he gets Nikolai Meritich, who provides the spark that they need, which is what they been should have did. This team is solidified around him. They're playing better defense. He brought in the Mech over for. He gets DeAndre Liggins. He gets Walter Lemon Jr. These are good people, good pieces to what they're doing. These guys are shooting three point better. They're playing better defense. So I, this was this that is Skip Bayless. These guys are the reason why there's a Pelican post game report. He's the reason why they are the reason why because they do not watch the Pelicans every night. They do not follow the Pelicans every night. They are too busy looking at Golden State, looking at Cleveland, looking at Houston, looking at whoever's hot. They do not watch the New Orleans Pelican games every night. They do not. They do not follow this team like we follow this team. That's why they can make these dumb act, these dumb ass comments and not know what the hell they're talking about. That's totally asinine that he's an overrated player. That is not overrated. His stats put him on level of people like Moses Malone and Bob McAdoo. These are freaking Hall of Famers. So are they overrated as well? An overrated player cannot dwell in the rarefied air of a Hall of Famer, bro. Bottom line. So that was just stupid, ignorant commentary by Skip Bayless. So, you know, that's why. But thanks, Skip Bayless and all these other guys, uh, uh, these national dudes uh, for not covering our team consistently. And then when they want to talk about it, they, they want to throw some derogatory mess out there. You do not watch the Pelicans every night like we watch the Pelicans every night. This is what we do, man. to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans.